Hello, and welcome to a cardboard coat check. I am Mo Tuzano, the tabletop bellhop, your cardboard concierge. Cardboard coat check is our silly name for our series of unboxing videos. Today, we're going to check in a game, and that game is Gold West from Tasty Minstrel Games. What we are going to do is take a look at the contents of these box before it gets added to my collection. So first off, I do have to say that Tasty Minstrel Games did provide this game for purposes of review. There was no other compensation provided. So we're going to take a quick look at this game by J. Alex Kevern. Um, I am table. I am Otuzno, the tabletop bellhop. Normally, I answer your gaming and game night questions. And you can send your questions to questions at tabletopbellhop.com and find the answers to those questions at our website, tabletopbellhop.com. There, you will also find a bunch of other gaming content, including link to our YouTube videos, our podcast, reviews, and answers to gaming game night questions. We've also got some cool stuff down at the bottom on our webpage that's like lists of uh, podcasts, Twitch streamers, and uh, tabletop crafters from Etsy. Some really neat stuff, ways to upgrade your game. So right on to the video. All I've done now is remove the shrink. I know I have not played this game. I don't know that much about it, so you're pretty much getting my thoughts as I open this up. Gold West is a delicate balance of resource management and area control. Sounds good to me. I like heavy games. Build your mining empire while vying over the precious metals of the frontier. I'm not sure why that needs an exclamation mark, but it's there. Carefully manage your supply tracks and refine the right resources at the right time, and you'll keep a step ahead of the competition. Can you lead the West into the Golden Age? Uh, game designed by J. Alex Cavern. Art and graphic design by Adam P. McClever. Uh, this is from, again, Tasty Minstrel Games. Uh, the MSRP is listed here, but I don't see. Here's what I was looking for. Two to four players. 45 to 60 minutes. For how heavy that sounds, that seems short. Um, age 14 plus, so I never trust the ages. I got to admit, I do dig there's gold foil on the box. You kind of catch that. That's a nice touch. The wood's a nice touch. Looks good. Nice solid box. Plus, it's standard box size. Thank you, Tasty Minstrel Games. We are going to open this up. Oh, I see gold. Look at all the gold we found. All right. As Oh, wait. Flip Flory would like to sniff and smell. Or it's smell, spell and, smell and spiel? That has got quite the new game smell. I dig it. I, I feel like I just opened a pack of magic cards. I'm going to sit and spiel, smell and spiel this game for a while. All right. Rule book on the cover. We'll get back to that. We have some form of player board. Okay. Right off the bat. Very, very thin player board. Not a huge fan of that, I gotta say. Um, think Terraforming Mars, etc. That is a thin player board. I much prefer thicker ones, but I'm sure it's serviceable. But also, this is definitely not in set or anything. So this is gonna be one of those boards you're gonna have to worry about things sliding around. So a little disappointed with that. Gameplay makes up for it, I'm fine. It's not terrible. It doesn't feel like it's gonna rip or anything. I'm gonna put this down. But you can tell there's spots you're gonna put cubes and circles down here. I betcha there is someone on Etsy right now with an overlay for this game. And it looks like it might be a good upgrade. So there's a whole bunch of these, four of these. So these are your player boards, obviously. Then we're getting right into punch boards. And holy cow, these are sparse. Like, usually companies try to fit as many on a board as possible. EMG definitely didn't go that way. And the complete opposite of the player board, that is some of the thickest cardboard for chits I have seen. That is thick. What an odd comparison of the two. So it looks like we got a bunch of resources. We got a bunch of tiles. They say Boomtown on the back. I know, again, nothing about this game, but look at all the cubes and cylinders. Does that not look like a Euro? <laughs> this game is screaming heavy Euro with a theme. Same deal. It looks almost identical. Oh, cool. We have a puzzle board. Okay, even thicker cardboard is the board. So the board is a, some form of puzzle fit. So you got, I'm not going to be able to unfold this all. And these obviously don't go together. So this goes over here, it looks like. Yeah, so that counts up. Normally, I like to hold the board out so everyone can see it. I can't quite do that. This is nice and solid. That's a nice thick board. Uh, Single-sided. I can't build that. And interestingly, the rest is not pre-punched. So here's what we got in the bottom part of the box. And seriously thick tile. Again, I'm... It's such an odd comparison to have such thin player boards and have everything else. Really, this really looks like the board game Attica. It's a really good Roman game. One of the best three-player games I own. Really good two-player, too. Not so great at four. 
Uh, so a whole bunch of these tiles that obviously you're going to make the board up. You've got all the different resources. Uh, you got some kind of weird river thing. I'm sure that's probably important. Uh, baggies. Thank you. Nice big baggie. I don't know. Probably for the board pieces. Some nice little baggies. Thank you, TMG, for the baggie. Um, this is a box sword. I'm not going to complain about it. It works. It's functional. It gets everything to me. It would have been nice to have a nice insert where everything has something to go, but thankfully they didn't waste money on making this look pretty. I actually appreciate that. Now we have bags of stuff. We're going to go through all these in a second. Uh, we got more baggies and more baggies. Lots of baggies. Thanks for all the baggies. Face the Men's Pro Games. We're going to open up these. Here's something else I like. Look at this. Oh, that's so nice because now I can just put them back in there. Thank you. Okay. Dig it. Okay, every single one of these says investments, and they have various resource cylinders on them and point values. I am not going to show a lot of them. They all kind of look the same. We're going to throw these back in. Uh, my guess is probably endgame scoring, but again, I have not played the game. So we're going to put these right back in here. Which I love it. Look at this, and resealable. Bang. Now I don't have to worry about the card sliding everywhere. More companies should do this. Thank you, TMG. All right. We got little miners. Cute meeple. I do like the fact that the, we have evolved past the standard meeple that every game has the same. I'm only going to hold one of these out. That is a cute miner meeple. I like it. I can already tell. Here's another bonus. We have colorblind friendly player colors. So Deanna is going to hate this game because there's no green. Desk and package. Here's a pro tip. If you have humidity in your basement and you keep your games in the basement, keep the desk and package in the game. Don't just throw it out. All right, resources. Looks like we got gold, silver, and copper probably. There's definitely gold. Very shiny. Uh, painted. Not like Terraforming Mars. Not like copper or gold colored, but these are actually gold painted. Very shiny. Actually, that's going upgrade on the stream. We have the silver, which is not quite as shiny, but also reflective. And then I don't know if this if this is supposed to be copper. This is not shiny. Maybe it's like clay or something else. And they're actually different shapes. So there's another color bind bonus. So the gold is a octagon. The silver is um what do you call that? Six sides septagon. And then we have a pentagon for these. So that's another cool touch. Nice touch to make them all actually unique shapes as well as colors. I like it. I'm impressed. These two menstrual. All right. We have cubes. They, they look like cubes because it's a board game and they're cubes. They're smaller than the ones in Imhotep. We have black cubes. And we have green cubes. And again, I'm really guessing these are probably pretty colorblind friendly. Those are very distinct colors. All right. Now we're moving on to more stuff in player colors. Obviously, we're going to have lots of chips. I'm just going to pull one of these out. We're going to go with the blue color just because. Okay, this is worth noting. Coming out stuck together. So someone bagged this a little quickie, quickly, but yeah, that came apart easy. Not really a bad thing. I don't see any chipping. No. Even with the blue and the orange, none of the blue stuck on the orange. Yeah, some of these are, are stuck together. That might have been the only pile that was stuck together. But it worked out fine. No chipping, no damage to the chip. So that's cool. I was worried when I first saw it. So chip. We got something that's silk screened here that looks like wagons. All right. Okay, most, a lot of games have cubes. This game has triangles. No clue. Little triangles. Not even pyramids too, just like three-dimensional triangles. And again, in the four player colors. Baggy full of those. And then some nice silk screened wagons. It's a nice touch that they added the artwork on these. I'm going to grab a white one. Hopefully the camera will pick it up, but it'll show off the art the best. I like it. Can you see that? Oh, yeah. Look at that. Nice little wagon. And there we have it. That is everything in Gold West. I'm going to put some of this back, and then we're going to take a look at the rule book and flip through that. Lots and lots of baggies. There's baggies everywhere. I cannot complain about a lack of baggies. 
which is all you need for a game like this. I don't need an insert that holds everything in the exact place, but give me somehow to hold all the stuff. Extra bonus points for the resealable sleeve for the cards. I'm excited by this. I know there's probably people watching that are um, more thematic game fans, Amera Thrash game fans that are like, oh my god, that looks so boring. No, this looks good to me. There it is. All right, we're going to look at the rule book. Surprisingly thin for what's supposed to be a heavy game. Uh, we're only looking at 15 pages, and the last page is all just a summary. So we are looking at 13 pages of rules. Oh uh, No, because that's a summary of the Boomtown cards. We are looking at 11 pages of rules. Final term and game end. Okay, so 11 pages of rules, not bad. Nice big text. Okay, out of all the rule books I have seen today, and I've done six, this is my sixth unboxing video. This is the happiest to my eyes. This is nice. You got light background, dark text, and a nice big font. Lots of full color images. Oh man, that is so much easier to read when I held up earlier. I dig it. Influence tracks. It shows where everything's going to get stored. Lots of examples. Gameplay introduction. I like that. It's going to, it shows there's different setup for. Yeah, so there's six steps to set up. And then the rules for the game how to play, turn sequence using metals, getting investments, lots of examples, lots of graphics. I see pictures of the game board. Looks like your wagons are on some kind of train trail that you're going to keep track of. Completing build actions, final turning game end. Looks good. I'm, I'm impressed by this. That is a nice rule book. This is the nicest rule book I've seen today with the largest font, lots of examples, full color. I'm looking forward to this. This looks good. So, that was Gold West by Tasty Minstrel Games, a game I'm really excited to get to the table. Um, this is set in 1849, obviously the Gold Rush, American Gold Rush by Tasty Minstrel Games. So that was Gold West, that was an unboxing of Gold West from Tasty Minstrel Games by me, Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop. Uh, you can find my content at tabletopbellhop.com, where you can find game reviews, news, and other cool gaming stuff, including some hot deals on board games, some lists of podcasts, lists of streamers, lists of YouTubers, and other cool things where I'm trying to gather up. I'm trying to find all of them. I want to collect all the gamers I can find on the internet and put links to all their stuff, promote each other, and help, uh, you know, rising ships. Rising tide raises all ships, or whatever, that thing. Uh, if you dig what you're seeing, you can head over to patreon.com slash tabletopbellhop, and it would be awesome if you considered tipping the bellhop. For Tabletop Bellhop, I am Mo Tuzno, the Tabletop Bellhop. Good night, and game on.